to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by GhostBed.com. I'm feeling nervous today, James. Why? I just I woke up and I feel uneasy today. You know? What's, Ooh. Whoa. Whoa. Hello. hello. Putting it down a couple notches. Felt a little tall. Right. What's going on? The book is coming out um, in ugh, like four days, five days. There it is. Thank you for my service. Subscribe on YouTube so you can see this lovely thing. This is the finished hard copy. Yeah. This is it. Um, and that one I... I read it once I got the hard copy. You only read the hard copies. Because it feels so awesome and real. Yeah. You know what I mean? When you're reading the drafts and we've been through this for three years. Correct. When you're holding the hard copy and reading it, you kind of go, as you're reading it, you go back in your mind like, this is fucking crazy. Like, this is Real. Yeah, it's a real book. It's a real book. It's gorgeous. Feels awesome. Mm-hmm. Matte finish, guys. I yeah, love yeah. a matte finish. Yeah. Um, and it's really colored pictures amazing. in it. I mean, they look. They went all out. Penguin went all out for this, and um, I'm amped. It, it's one of those things, though. For whatever reason, I woke up this morning, and again, like you said, you you work on something for three years. There's always a, a date. You know, you finally get a release date, and you just kind of it just seems far away, and you're like, yeah. Eh. Oh, cool. When it gets close, when it gets close. And then I woke up and there was an email saying, Hey, you know, it's, it's a week from today that your book's coming out or whatever. And I was just like, Whoa, shit. And here's why I feel nervous now is like, um, reviews will start to come in. Obviously everybody who pre-ordered, um, and pre-order, please, by all means, pre-order um, before it comes out next week so you can have it. All of these hardbacks count towards the New York Times bestseller list, and we're very, very close. Um, I, I just, I want it out. I hope the reviews are great and all that shit, and I think that's the nerves of, like, I don't know. It's so different than every other military book ever written. Yes. That's my only wonder of, like, man, will people get this? What people? Like normal people? Anyone. Civilians? Uh, no, an- anyone across the board. M- military and civilians. Um, and the reason, I... and w- here's the reason why I say military as well is there's a lot of comedy in this. Um, when you're yeah, doing some but dark I shit. Think and I, th- I think we did it right, but it's never been done before, so I'm not sure. When we go to all these things and... We meet with a lot of people that are military. They're all hanging out live together. Shows you're about? Live shows, yeah. whatever it may be, right? Meetups, things like this. Yeah. Not once in my experience do I see these guys and girls or whatever sitting around talking about military terms and like serious things about the military and hard times that they had. I always see them joking, talking shit. Yeah. Like giving each other shit. Um, you know, a, being in a safe place where they can make fun of things that other that might offend other people. So, in that regard, I think this is exactly the kind of book that they would want. I would think. I don't know, and I think there's just enough things that, like when I read it, that I don't understand that they will that I think will, you know, connect them to the book. Hopefully, yeah. But then a lot of other things that, like, you know. I feel like I'm the perfect audience for it because I don't know much about it, right? Right. Um, and loved it. So to what you said, that's what gave me the idea to go down that route was yeah. all of these live shows, Range 15, all that stuff. I was like, oh man. Meeting all these people. Everybody doesn't want to take this shit that seriously and uh, you can have fun with it. And I remember going in, you know, pitching my agent. I said, look, I want this to be Deadpool in the military, essentially. And um, he was like, man, that has never been done before. And I was like, but I think if we do it right, it could be great. I will say this. There is going to be a large portion of the population that would be very offended 
by, <laughs> do you know what I mean? By the, not lightheartedness, but by the fact that a lot of the book is talking about how your sense of humor in the military is one of your, you know, most important weapons, tools, yes. whatever, yeah. things that keep you alive. And I think that most civilians don't understand that. So you think they the civilians will be the ones that will be offended? I think snowflakes, I think liberals, I think all these people that um, love to be offended, I think they're going going to be. But are we used to that? Yeah. Yeah, we are, obviously. And I think the military community and I think the drinking bros and everybody know that. They're like, we only, that's a lot of things that I've heard from them when we hang out Yeah. with drinking bros and people in this group is... We don't get to talk like this in real life because people get offended and they don't like it and they think we should be serious about stuff. And the only way that they have been able to get through on the other side, be a normal person, is the sense of humor about it or looking back on it and being like, holy fuck, that was insane with a little bit of laughter and a smirk maybe. So well, this that's is, what I kind of got from it. And this is nonstop from comedy. From beginning to end. Yeah. That's the through line of it. And I think that's what Matt and Jared and all of them have built their whole, you know. Oh, yeah. Empire off of. For sure. Platform off of yeah. is the fact that we don't sit around and cry about it. We definitely laugh about it. Yeah. We now, definitely it, it, drink and talk shit and say things that will offend other people that haven't been through what we've been through. Now, if I was writing a stock standard biography, I wouldn't be nervous because that's someone's life and... You know, and you might not like their life, but um, that's what a biography is. This is not that. It's not like I didn't and like the part. And it's so different yeah. that it's <gasps> like, uh, did you lose the hoop? I'm ready to fight. Hoop dreams. I'm getting ready to fight now. Yeah, you are. I'm taking them off. Uh, anybody watching the video show, James has got huge hoop hoop rings. You had hoop dreams? I don't know. I was trying to Coming thing. in today. You know what I mean? I was trying to thing. Saw an interview with Tiffany Haddish and I thought I could fucking be, <laughs> be cool, but I can't be cool. <laughs> I like how you were like, hey, I'm going to go Jenny from the block and get some hoop earrings. I see a lot of people trying they look nice. it. I, they I look see nice. a lot of people trying it, but really, if I, you know, earnestly try to do anything, it never works out for me. No. It all has to be ironic. It's the only way for it to work. Oh, uh, always. Anyway, carry on. Mm, carry on. Ah! Um, <laughs> but yes, so uh, it's, it's, look, it's coming out um, on the 20th. Uh, I am unbelievably proud of it, and uh, again, I think it's going to shock the world, so we'll see what happens, but yeah, this was, the, this was, I felt nervous this morning waking up, and I was just like, uh. And I'm very proud of you, and I think on this show, we can, I can say how much work I know you personally put into this book. Yes. So, yeah. and that's not going to be said a lot, because it was a couple, it was, you know, two or three people's efforts, right? In different ways. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Matt's done a lot of work. Nils did a lot of work. But from what I see, you know, he wrote the fucking thing. So I'm very proud. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's, um, uh, it, was, it was a challenge. And to do that and have someone else's name on it, I think is another thing to be proud of. Yeah, to yeah, To be yeah. like, I just... I wrote it, I brought my skill to it, and I don't need to have like my name all over the place or even talked about anywhere other than this show, really. Well, it was funny. There's a couple pictures in here uh, of, of us. Yeah, and I, and I, and I wrote in there. Yeah, yeah, I just yeah. said, look, I'm, I'm contractually obligated to write. Uh, or there's, there's supposed to be two pictures of me. Uh, obviously joking, like every fucking thing in, in this book is. But um, yeah, it's strange for like how crazy and like, you know, arrogant I am in real life uh there is certain things where I'm like ah, I'm good on that like uh movies books uh tv shows um in particular where it is such a group effort and everything else it's just like and it All right, is his cool. story and it is his life and yeah. it is he did a lot of you know opening up and work in that way but would I be able to do it I'm not sure and I'm About not your even life? no be able to write an entire book and not have you know eh, I, I i'm not sure if i would and i'm a lot different than you and it seems like i would be the one that would be able to do it and you <laughs> wouldn't right but it's the opposite i'm yeah i'm all about the projects and when i opened up my company i'm all about me when i opened know? up my production company too with the films um with street justice i put all the credits 
in alphabetical order in the back, no matter who did what, um, just so there was no bitching between producers or writers right. or whatever it is. Like, uh, I always firmly believe in that. That way it's just like, hey guys, I, I, fi I figure you can just work the hardest on something knowing what it is rather than fighting for top billing or whatever that no, is. You're right. Right. Um, and that's just been my style over the years. There's like a, there's a couple of things I fought for where I was just like, all right, cool. Fucking did this or that. But, yeah. uh, my f face really small on the logo in a Cheerio. Yep. Yeah. Is what I'm fighting for now on this show. And the last thing I will say about this is I'm very, um, how do you say? I don't give you a lot of praise or comp, compliments no in our real never. life now listen guys if you've listened to this show <laughs> what are we 403 404 whatever you know how ross is right can you imagine if i was at home praising him every day boy what a fucking monster he would be um uh, so imagine this right let's say because i'll find out on the 28th mm -hmm. whether or not august 28th which is 16 days away and i am putting together a little something for you at well, here's the thing. So I, I, we'll, we'll find out if, if we made the New York Times bestseller list. Um, we'll find out if, it, look, if I'm number one, if I'm a number one New York Times bestselling author, you will never mm -hmm. hear the end of that. Uh -huh. um, and I'll demand that you call me that right. before you say my so name. So this is kind of, you guys, if you never really hear me on this show, <laughs> giving him any praise whatsoever, uh, my job is to do the opposite because oh. otherwise there would be a Ross monster on these streets wreaking havoc. I mean, what would you do? I mean, you would just Kool-Aid well, man bust into everybody's house and tell them exactly no, 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 how no, no, amazing no. you are. What would first, happen? First things first. I've already thought about it. Uh, first things first. All of the social media descriptions change immediately to number one best-selling author sure if, if that were to happen right or new york times best-selling author what tattoo ross are patterson we, have we uh, talked about what do you mean have we talked about any kind of tattoo that you were going to get if you were number one no 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 um i i, I want to get my my other son's name on there but that's about it we'll see how he turns out but yeah yeah um but uh to figure out no i i don't look at it I don't, I don't look at it like that um there are there are things that uh, I want to do. So I'll open up. I'll well, well, fuck it. We'll go super personal here. Um, there's a bar that we enjoy in town, uh, the Blind Elephant. Sure. It's like a speakeasy. You have to knock on the door. It's downtown, and it's they in, wouldn't let me in the other day. Which it's I'm in not. an alley, yeah, because they don't allow like ripped jeans. I had or, the ripped jeans. Find me girls' pants these days that don't have a rip in them. But go ahead. It's very prohibitiony. Uh, the, the feel of it and, and look it's my favorite bar in town so like I'm not gonna bitch sure about that uh -huh. um, and then not letting you know rip jeans in well there was one night where we walked in and I don't know if you remember this um, but we walked in and we were just kind of chatting with the bartender it was empty I, I, it felt like a Tuesday or something like yeah. that um, and I said you know he was going over the it's one of those bars where they make the the fucking drinks that take you know, a half hour piece. Yeah. Best drinks on the planet, but it takes a half hour piece. And then there's usually mm -hmm. there's some a form flame, of a flame, egg white. orange rind yeah, peel, yeah, whatever yeah, it's yeah, going to yeah. be. And, uh, you know, lots of shaking that like over the shoulder, a lot of magic involved. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. A lot Vests, of magic involved. Yeah. Mustaches, you know. So I'd asked for this whiskey and I said, look, uh, I'd like this. I think it was bullet. I think it was bullet was, was, uh, that bullet rise is my jam. Sure. Um, it's a nice mid-level whiskey, right? Definitely. And uh, he's like, oh, you should get this or whatever. It's better than that. And I, and I had had the thing that he suggested, and I was like, I'm good. And I was like, that's just a pricier version of that. You know? Right. And I was like, you don't have to sell me that. Sure. And he goes, uh, he goes, oh, all right, cool. And he goes, uh, yeah, because I, I wasn't going to recommend any of the ones on the top shelf. And like, and because they're, they're, the shelves go up to the ceilings, and the ceilings are pretty high in there because they've got all this fucking booze. And I go, oh, what are those? And he goes, well, there is a bottle of something. I don't know what that something. I forget the name of it. And it's not Pappy Van Winkle. I would have remembered that. Mm -hmm. um, but he goes, now that, you know, I obviously wouldn't recommend. And I was like, why not? And he said, it's $100 a shot. Well, it's $100 a shot. And I was oh, okay. like, oh, okay, cool. And I was like, uh, have you ever poured one? And he goes, no. Actually, no one in here has poured that shot. And I was like, great. I'll tell you what, I will come back. 
on a special occasion, um, waiting for this one thing. Mm-hmm. Um, whenever, whatever the, the first book is that hit, hits the New York Times bestseller list, I'll come in and I'll order those shots. And he was just like, sure you will, you know? All right, brother. Because yeah. it does sound like an unbelievable thing. Everybody yeah. and their mother wants to write a book. Right. Every single person I've encountered wants to write a book or about either their life or experience or fiction or whatever. And it's, to me, it's almost like uh, running a marathon where, where everybody says, oh, man, I'd like to do a marathon once in my life um, because it is that difficult to do. Mm. And uh, so I said to myself, I was like, you know, when the first one hits, I'm going to go into that bar. Just whatever that shot is, I'm going to have that shot and say, all right, fuck it. Because that's, that's what I was thinking that night when I was in there. So I would Be like to do that. Move. Just go in by yourself, buy one for one the bartender shot, and one for you. And then leave. And that's it. And walk away and not say who I am, what I do, nothing, and then just fucking leave. That is something I'd like to not do. Not say who you are? Yeah, I know, right? Kick open the door. Hey, hey, hey. guess who it is? Well, it's it's not the guy at all. It's like new people. And I'm like, sure it will be new people. So I, whatever, man. I, but that's I would I like, like to it. do that. Um, I like it. And then, of course, the social media descriptions will definitely change. That'll be the top, top thing. What do I get? Uh, you get to be married to the <laughs> New York Times bestselling author, which is a gift in itself. Sure. A gift in itself. Sure, sure. But it's one of those accomplishments where you feel like if, if the plane goes down, right? If I'm on a plane and it goes down, at least I'll get a mention in the article of like, uh, who died on that, that aircraft of 126 people? A New York Times bestselling Wife author of, died yeah. on there. Yeah. Well, you'll be, and like if you're not on the flight with me, uh, I mean, if you are on the flight with me. If I am, yeah. You'll be one of the 125 others that died, yeah. that perished. But, yeah. um, but me, I will get Depending top where billing. I'm sitting, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I will yeah, get yeah, top yeah, yeah. billing. Yeah. And this and is something cool. in LA that me and my friends used to say, like between us, of like, all right, if we died now, who gets top billing right. in the article? Um, that's one that would be like, oh, it was a New York Times bestselling author who died on that flight. Like that would, that would make it, you know? Yeah. I don't know if like, oh, the guy from the new guy died. Like I don't. Right. No. You know? No. Um, but this, that would, that would do it. So that, that would be a big deal and something that I've worked hard for and, and we'll see what happens. So I need you guys to go out and buy the goddamn hardbacks. All right. Come on, brother. Just go and pre-order a hardback. It'll be there on Wednesday. Amazon's quick like that. That shit gets there, man. Oh yeah. If you pre-order, it comes on the day. On the day, it right? It comes out. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that'll, that'll be fun. Um, the, the thing that will not be fun that day is it is the same day as the school board hearing, um, which we found out. The dates were mixed up. I do get to ask questions. I do get to go in front of and speak to these people. Sure. And so for two, I, and I looked at the schedule. It was like fucking two and a half hours. Of oh, yes. So oh, yes. I will be there on that day and that's going to suck. Um. <laughs> exactly. Um, and then the other day where you find out if, if you guys are New York Times bestselling, right? Yes. Is first day of school. Is it really? For, uh, for the, the five-year-old. No for way. For the kindergarten, yes. So it's the 28th? Mm-hmm. Okay. But like I said, I still have well, a Well, that'll be a great thing. day. That and would be a great day, yeah. It'll be a great day. Yeah. Ki- first kids going off to kindergarten. Friends and family, we're going to have a little olive garden thing. Yeah. Did you call OG? Yeah, I've rented uh, the little room that they have there. Stop it. Is that what you really did? That would be the funniest thing on the planet if you did that. I don't know. Maybe I did. (laughs) Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. Is that true or not true? You guys will see. Oh, my God. That would be so fucking funny. I also have some fun stuff planned for our child's first birthday, which you guys will be seeing as well. Oh, that's really funny. (laughs) If I make it and you fucking book out the Olive Garden, I would die. That would be the best. I would have endless breadsticks. (laughs) <laughs> right all night long i know if you're gonna celebrate you just want to shove some breadsticks in your face really, do you not that would be really funny who doesn't yeah are you, are, are you uh, yeah oh my god <laughs> if it's olive garden uh 
I'm glad it wouldn't be Red Lobster. Fuck, man. I know. Well, obviously, after doing that video last year, doesn't hold up, right? No. And nor will Olive Garden. I'll tell you. That, but that is the incorrect. The breadsticks will still be amazing. The salad. Uh, you were the in apps. I, you're incorrect on that. I have been to an Olive Garden recently, and it still held up. Okay. Yeah, I was traveling in one of these cities, and it was next to a hotel, and I, I ne- it was late. Right. And um, I just wanted to go in and get a salad and and uh, get some meat, a protein, and it was it was it was good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, like Olive Garden's still all right to me. It's be- between that and Carabas, and I think Carabas would be f- like a little bit better, but not as funny. <laughs> Well, we'll find out. Well, we'll find out. We'll find out what happens, you guys. If not, there is no party and all the dreams are are crushed. If you are number one, yeah, right, I'll have to open that party up to the the people. I'll have to give you guys the address. We're going to have to get everybody up in that bish, bish. Do they have private rooms at the Olive Garden? Yeah. You're kidding. I'm not kidding. Wow. That's funny. That is really fucking funny. Well, now there's more incentive to, to, to make this go down. So you're watching the video show. Boom. Here's the final. Thank you for my service. Buy it. Hardback. Hardback's the, that's the easiest way to get there, by the way, uh, to the number one. The, the way the charts are divvied up is by hardback, paperback, uh, and then overall. But the problem is with overall is uh, our paperback doesn't come out for a year. So like for big books, paper, paperback doesn't come out for a what while. What I'm going to love is people being like, who the hell? Like, they don't understand how awesome the Drinking Bros and this, like, community is. Yeah. I love that. Like, even when the movie was, like, number one, people were like, what? Like, who? what the fuck? Yeah. And you're like, you don't get it. Yeah. You don't get it. No, that's funny, man. So uh, that's we'll what, see. That's the other part is seeing people's, like, just bewilderment of, like, really? Yeah. Now, who the fuck are these guys? Right? <laughs> it's my favorite. I uh, want to recap a quick story here um, that we did a show about, um, show before last. We did an emergency show about the Epstein thing. Sure. And uh, I got a truck ton of emails. Yeah, I was there physically. Yeah. Um, I was physically there on the show, but. No, I, wh- what I meant was we got a, a, a truck ten emails about that show. No, no, I in know. Particular, I'm saying yeah. <laughs> it was late on a Saturday. Yeah, it was. And uh, mom had some wine, but you know. And everybody was just like, was dude, good. how did you know? Because uh, we also honey, did honey, 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 on Drinking honey. Bros podcast, we had uh, Angie Everhart on, and we were talking about it 12 hours before he committed suicide. And Creepy. both Dan and I were like, yeah. he's going to kill himself. And everybody was like, yo, man, I... How did you know? And all that other shit. And I was just like, there's too much. There's too much going on. Um, uh, the, the update I do want to give, though, is on that show, we had discussed about whether or not he had left behind something, right? To go out to the press, the media, okay. or something else. Uh-huh. We're not going to get any answers over, because there was no video of this, no video of the death. Uh, the cellmate was transferred hours before on the day before, mm. uh, the, the guards didn't bother to check on him for hours, mm-hmm. uh, all, all of this shit. But um, there is a story out there that he kept very, very detailed diaries of people, places, and events, and all, everything that took place. Mm-hmm. So whether or not those get out to the public or not is another story. Why would you do that? I, I always think about that too. Why? Were you a, were you a diary person growing up? No, I mean, I had a couple and I would try, but the entries would be so far apart because I, that's just my personality, but. I knew people who really did. really into it. And and then, yeah, oh. yeah. And it was always like, uh, I read my sister's diary, my thing or whatever. Dear diary. Yeah. I, I never, it, for as much as I write, I never had a diary. I never did that shit. I had a book of jokes because I was going to stand up pretty right. young, but that was about it. Um, but the people, the, the people with the diaries is like, why do you want to? I want to document the, the ledger, of, the I, detailed yeah. ledger of like Bill Clinton got a blowjob here. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, buddy, <laughs> you can't fucking be writing that down and keeping it. Yeah. And he had CD ROMs as well, I heard too. He did, yeah. Um, and there was Brother. a million pictures on there in a safe 
Now those are in the now, Fed's does he hands. Keep it for blackmail purpose, or does he really just keep it for his that taxes? Is, it's a great question. <laughs> so, why, yeah, because why keep it? Like, do you do you W? Is it for memories to go Clinton? back and yeah? yeah. I, I don't, I don't know what happens there, because um, a lot of his money was unexplained as well, and it was just like, hey man, was that part of it? Hmm. Who knows? But um, I, I don't know. As soon as this broke, obviously on the show, I've been talking about it for weeks and weeks that he was going to do it. And, uh, and that was it. Uh, the weird thing is, is you know, where it's a few days past and it's like story seems like it doesn't exist anymore. I have to say, yeah. Um, so the daily did nothing on it. Not a peep. Uh, New York times. Mm-hmm. Not even they did a in... huge article, the New York times itself. Yeah. But that was when, uh, he first got arrested. Uh, no, I mean, they, they did one after he died. They wrote, oh, a, they okay. wrote a huge article, but I'm surprised that they didn't do that. I, I wonder if it's because of the backlash they took um, uh, when Trump was speaking to the families of El Paso and Dayton. Mm-hmm. They had put a, a your normal headline for any other president who would speak at a tragedy and just said, Trump, you know, solemnly gives this thing and mm-hmm. uh, to the families and the left which is all their audience out, lost it. And they lost a bunch of subscriptions, canceled a bunch of shit. And they were like, you can't write anything positive about this experience. And it's like, no, fuck off, man. You, you can. Uh, I wonder if because of that blowback that they didn't, because let's face it, we all know the former president was Clinton in this, right. that he, they were right. alleged. Right. I wonder if they're now catering to that audience because I heard they're starting to make more money off the podcast than they're online and they're digital. Yeah, obviously. Because it's, it's, is it number one? Uh, it's number, it's, it's hovers within the first one through 10 mm. in the overall. It's um, millions of people, man. Mainly because it goes daily. But when they always do a commercial on the podcast to subscribe to or to get the New York Times. Mm-hmm. So that's the way that they make their money still. So they're like, the best way to support this podcast is to get the New York Times. No other ads? Um, they have like one other one, one okay. or two. But m- mainly, it's just someone coming on saying, hey, if you want to support this podcast, this is the best way to do it. Because they're just trying to. Yeah, I, I, wonder if that so was, I wonder if that was in reaction to the Clinton thing and, uh, and then the other reaction they got last week after after posting that a, a, a positive statement about trump once because they lost a bunch of subscribers i wonder if they were like hey we're gonna leave the story alone because that's where all I think of- a lot of people are leaving it alone to be honest i haven't seen you know a little bit after the death on sunday there was a little bit on geesty yep on willie geist about just facts facts of what what suicide watch is and what it means to be taken off of it and sure. blah, 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 blah. Oh, that's it. So j- I think because it's so steeped in conspiracy, mm-hmm. a lot of people are staying away from it until hard facts come out. Cause right now it's just too much you crazy nothing. shit. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, you got nothing. You have no cameras right. in the cell. Right. You got, uh, you know, no roommate, no nothing, no anything. So, uh, no explanations why he was taken off suicide. You, you have nothing. I, I, you know, I know the attorney general is getting involved in all that stuff, but uh, it could be a while. And you know, after the Vegas shooting thing, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go too far down the rabbit hole until I hear some more shit. But I'm shocked how it disappeared. Um, the story. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody's really talking about it. Uh, what people are talking about today, though, is is apples. Um, First, they finally had a trailer for that uh, new drama with Jennifer Aniston and Reese Witherspoon. Okay. Because they're doing original programming. And, um, man, looks good. Looks it does? really good, yeah. It's serious. I mean, how could it not be good? It's serious. I didn't know if it was going to be a comedy or not. Yeah, exactly. You never know with Aniston and Reese. Um, and you know who is the husband in it? It's Steve Carell. Really? Yeah. Serious? Being serious again? Yes, of course. Okay. That's that's all he's doing now. So okay. um, he's given up on comedy altogether and is all done with that. Okay. <laughs> don't, don't know why, um, but well, he is. I just I find it odd that he left the office to do dramas, 
and get away from TV. And now he's back on TV. Um, but I, I will say this. This is a big win for Apple because this is their first deep dive into original programming scripted. Yeah. They've done some reality shit before. But uh, as far as scripted goes, this is their first dive into it. And the, the trailer is pretty goddamn good. I'm, okay. I'm amped about it. Okay. Uh, I don't know. What do you watch on Apple TV? I don't even know. Yeah, you will. The little Apple TV. Yeah, you will. Okay. okay. So they're they're making a, you know, it'll be on your Apple TV and you pop it up and that's it. Jesse knows everything about technology. Yeah. My question though is after seeing it, if you have a Roku, because a lot of people do, mm-hmm. uh, those, those are my favorite TVs, by the way. Yeah. The, the Rokus. Um, they're simple, very, very childlike huge boxes Almost like the jitterbug the remote control has four buttons which i love yep don't need anything more than that roku is doing it right they're not a sponsor but they should be um and uh i wonder if apple's gonna have an app that you download on a roku or if they're gonna say if you want to watch you need to buy our devices because that's new as far as you know amazon's available on everything netflix is available on every device but Apple TV isn't. So is it going to require the actual Apple TV is what I wonder. Yes. And everything that Apple does will makes require it that? so that you have to exclusively use Apple products Man. for it. Yeah. And good for them. Just I guess. forging ahead on the dystopian society where they <laughs> rule all of us. The only thing I will say about this is because we talked about this on this show maybe a year and a half ago, right? If it's taking you this long to put out original content, you're miles behind Netflix at this point. Oh, my God. You had to have been making 20 to 30 shows behind the scenes at <sighs> this point. I, I don't know why. And you dropping just... them all at once. And Apple's sitting on like what, $3 trillion in cash or something crazy like that. I don't know why they just didn't buy Netflix and then just pop it in. You know, It would have been so much easier than this bullshit. Well, they are elitist. Yeah. But creating original content that's good is very, very, very hard. Um, and Disney, you know, with their, their new streaming app that's coming out this fall, uh, is going an opposite route, which I thought, is, and this just got announced, which I thought it was different, was they bought Hulu. So Hulu is going to be on there, and they're part of the bundle package. So okay. you're going to get this for $14.99. You're okay. going to get Hulu, ESPN+, Plus and Disney, which is like... Well, that's pretty much all you need, right? I mean, you still always need Netflix for their original programming. But if you have sports, TV yeah. shows, primetime TV shows, which is everything that's all on Hulu. Because Disney owns ABC. So for me, for the big guy here, sure, I watch a lot of ESPN and ABC for live sports. Like, I don't know how you beat that deal at fourteen ninety nine because that's what Netflix is by itself. Yeah. So, eh, buckle up for the fall. But does it have HBO? No. Oh. You know what? Through Hulu, you can get your subscriptions for HBO and Showtime. They're all on there. Okay. So, they have all the shows on there. And then if you click on them, you have to, it takes you to subscribe. Down some portal. Kind of, yeah, down some, some fuckboy portal. Yeah. Put a little fuckboy portal on uh, there. Oh, boy. That's terrible, James. You went... More aggressive. You're a horrible person who says horrible things. <laughs> Whenever we say horrible things, we like to go right into our sponsors, Javes. Blammo, blammo, blammo. I'm talking about ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Um, we stole our kids' pillows. We should say that for the Look, audience. <laughs> and he, again, does not know the difference. No. Right. Does not know the difference. Um, and you took them. The, I, did not, I, I did not know they had cooling pillows as well. Oh, yes. So that's why I took them. The newer ones are cooling, which I left it out on just like on the table or something. And yeah. a friend came over and was like, oh, are these the pillows? And she was like feeling and was like, and I was like, yeah, they're cooling. And she's like, oh, my God. I'm like felt it, put her face up to it. Yeah. She's like, these are amazing. I'm going to have to get one. I was like, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So look, ghost bed across the board is, is probably the best in the business right now, man. For real. I think so. Again, for the price, for, I mean, the amazingness of it. I think, I feel like they have some technology that's a little bit different with the cooling and, and everything, but. 
Yeah. I may be biased. Anywho, and uh, if you're military or first responder, 15% off forever. Scroll down to the bottom of the page. Uh, regular humans like myself, you get $200 off that Ghost Lux mattress, and you're getting the free pillows this month with uh, your mattress purchases. So uh, do it. Also, 36 months, pay as you go, no interest program. No one's doing that on the interwebs. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. Next up, we got strikeforceenergy.com. <laughs> Boom, 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 shablankers. Shablankers. Uh, Strike Force Energy is the premier energy drink in the biz. Uh, uh, Do you like energy? Huh? Do you like energy? Do you hate to be tired? You like fun? <laughs> Get some Do you Strike like things Force that taste good? Get some Strike Force Energy. Uh, go to strikeforceenergy.com. No carbs, no sugars. It's a tasty, tiny little tin pouch. You squeeze it open and put it into any liquid available. Uh, they get orange, a ridge, grape, a lemon, 10 pack, 40 pack, 750 milliliter bottle. And uh, you're good to go, kids. Goes in vodka. So everybody's drinking with vodka this summer. It's cool for the summer. <laughs> They're drinking that and. Hard seltzers. Yeah. I'm fucking tired of it. So go to strikeforceenergy.com forward slash drinking bros. No, that's not true. It's not true. That was an old one. That is an old one and I apologize. Strike that from the record. Don't listen to that. Delete it from your minds and bodies. <laughs> uh, go to strikeforceenergy.com and save in the promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off. There, and that's good forever, and they ship everywhere in the entire He's world. He's nervous, guys. He's nervous. Oh, I got nervous when you said the seltzer, and we're going to talk about it right after the last sponsor. Oh. You know what happened today, and we're going to talk about it. Um, last but not least, this is what you came for, straightrazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Oh, you like it? Ooh, that's real nice, James. Ooh, I have been getting messages about eardrums. Oh, and problems out. and uh, problems yeah. and medical bills, and I will not pay them. <laughs> so stop sending them to me. And I apologize, but you know I give you a good lead up. Yeah, you do. The only way it would blow your eardrums out if you're a skipper. So quit skipping. A lot of good stuff happens in these sponsors, right? Yeah, you get they a do. lot of gold in uh, here. A lot, a lot of, of nuggets. nuggets. So quit skipping. Let's quit skipping. <laughs> um, go to straightrazors.com for all the finest products you need for a man. Shaving in a man's world. Uh, these are these are actually nice products. Like where you're just like, holy shit, these are super. Yeah, we need to bring it down. And crazy. Just be like these are real nice. These are really nice products. Uh, you definitely wouldn't use a straight razor to murder someone, to no. shave a pregnant bush. No. To shave your dog with. No. Uh, you you definitely do it. wouldn't uh, cut your child's sandwich with it before please you pack their lunch. Oh, please don't. Yeah, you you wouldn't use this razor. To shave your grandmother's neck. You wouldn't. Because her skin is gentle. <laughs> and you wouldn't know how much pressure to apply likes. <laughs> to those wrinkles. But Ooh. if you're a real man out there, go to straightrazors.com. Use the promo code REVOLUTION, 20% off. And remember, do not use it on your grandmother's neck. No. Thank you. Thank you for this service announcement. Uh, Jabes. Yes. Seltzers. Nope. Uh, yep. Uh-uh. We're going to deep dive into these. Right before we got on air, there was a breaking news. Nope. Natty Lights. Natural Lights. Dropping a seltzer. 6% alcohol. Okay. Yeah. Um, I and what are they trying to say? No sugar still? I don't know. One I, I sugar? Think so. No, I it's think so. It's sugar, you guys. Uh, it does the same to the knock body. Knock it off with that, James. What? It doesn't do anything to your body. Oh, it doesn't? No. Natural light, because I'm going to, you're no good at this. Not, oh, boy. It came up right away. Hard seltzer. Uh, yes. Yeah, so it's going to be flavored, man. Flavored, yeah. S-O-B. They're so, all flavored, yeah. So oh, it's going to be like a truly uh, white claw. So here's the first one. You ready for this? Sure. And again, they're, they're not a sponsor. This should be. Mm -mm. Should be. Uh, any liquor should be. Uh, natural light seltzer. The first one is Catalina Wine Lime. Mixer. What? Lime mixer. 
It's close. Catalina Lime Mixer. Love it. Big Funny. fan of that. Uh, when cherry and lime become best friends is what it says on the can. It's pretty funny. Cool. Uh, next one up is uh, Aloha of Beaches. <laughs> Big fan. Whoever their marketing department is you know, is on it, What flavor is that, you Aloha reckon? Beaches. What flavor is that, you reckon? Uh, Pineapple, so, something like this? Uh, no. Coconut? Nope. Uh, it says when mango. mango and peach there you go. go beach mode. That's what it says on the can. By the way, these are actual the actual. No, I love it. I love it. I get what they're doing. Yeah. So, I'm a fan, man, of this. Uh, and they're stronger. So what they're they're saying is, hey, all the other brands are five percent. They're six percent. Okay. Um, but a bit heavier on the calories. I'm so okay with that. These are one thirty per can, mm-hmm. uh, whereas like the rest of it's a hundred per can. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but it but it's going to be lower priced. Man, I think everybody's going to get into this game nowadays because we, we, the White Claw is everywhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, truly is truly. everywhere. So in our hood, it's Truly and White Claw yeah. across the board for all the gals. Going to be real is White Claw is actually sponsoring our house party in Orlando on the 23rd. That Fun. is real. Fun. Yeah. Fun. That, that is real. And I remember getting the email and they were like, hey, are you cool with this? And I was like. Fuck yeah, we're cool with that. Like, totally. Any free liquor, we're always cool with. Absolutely. So, whatever, man. It's going to be a white claw night. The claws are going to be out. No laws. There's going to be no laws. No laws. Heavy claws, though. Yeah. Yeah, blammo. I might have to wear a Santa hat. What? Santa Claus? Nope. Okay. Got it. Yeah, there it is. There it is. It's a thinker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, it's just really a normal joke. Everyone's a, every joke is a thinker for me. Yeah, it is. It takes me a second, you guys, <laughs> really, with any kind of wordplay. You know, I really need a, I need that extra second. I wonder how this is going to shake out, by the way. Because now that it's, <laughs> this is also getting closer, and, and I'm getting nervous about this as well. So the book comes out on the 20th, August 20th. Okay. The house party's on the 20th third um what we decided to do because we do live shows like all over you got to come to one in uh new orleans it was fun oh yeah it was blast our boy yeah. uh, tony tamparello really hooked that shit up and um, he said he's gonna be on the cruise too um I what love, i was I, wondering I fucking love that guy me um, too i would love to get him some ingredients on there but i don't think we can do that Oh, have to have him make those sandwiches? We're like, hey, thanks for coming to the cruise. Put him right at chef coat. Put him right in the kitchen. He's like, I actually wanted to hang out. Um, best mufaladas in the biz. Best sandwiches So what did you guys decide to do? House party. So I, I thought to myself, because we usually do it at a tailgate or a bar or a craft brewery. Um, for game day, we're doing it at a craft brewery. It's a cold brewery. Right. Um, and that's the day of the game. But the night before... Uh, you know, usually we, we meet up at a bar or, or something like that. And I was like, man, I wonder if we could just throw an old school house party, you know, because nobody does that anymore. And right. I feel. I feel like with social media and, and all, all of us are getting further and further away from each other and all that shit. I don't want to be on a stage away from people like I'm one of those dudes who just hangs, you know, mm-hmm. you were there, too. You, you, you're the same way where it's just yeah, like, yeah. I mean, shit. You were at the New Orleans event. And we stayed for. I don't know, five hours, six well, hours. I personally asked where my stage was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I walked in, and they were like, "We don't have one." Because you're you. high and then I, yeah, yeah. And then I was bummed, but I, I eventually hung out with the people. So what I what I thought was, I was like, "Man, it'd be cool if we did a house party, and then we could just get to know people and do all that shit." So are you like doing a show there, or yes. are you just okay inside the house? So are you just kind of man on the street stuff inside. No, so the 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 guy had a pool. Um, okay. His name is Jeff. Jeff Simmonton. Oh, Jeff. Um, he's got a pool, and so the way it's set up, like we'll do it, you know, outside the pool, and nice. and people can party and all that other stuff. Um, but I forgot like HOAs and you know all that other stuff. He said he doesn't have any, and that there's a cop in his neighborhood who's who listens to the show. So okay, we're cool. all hooked up. Cool, but, cool. Uh, I want. <laughs> Wonder how crazy it's gonna get. Yeah. I wonder if somebody's gonna try to punch a hole through the drywall or something like. Oh God! Do you remember the he event? He has to be uh, prepared for something like this, right? Because he a, has to know what he's getting into. I don't know, and here's why I, I got nervous. Do you remember the event we did in L.A.? We did a live show in L.A. 
And I thought for sure, like, hey, man, it's L.A. Nothing crazy is going to go down there. Which Somebody got arrested. It? Which one was it? Uh, Which show? It was at uh, where I shot Accepted. That movie Accepted. Um, the Legion Hall yes, or whatever? That's it. Someone got arrested? Yes. Why? intoxication and oh sure 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 that to, sounds normal trying to fuck shit up yeah but, that uh, sounds normal yeah mm-hmm. so yeah i think when you offer up your house <laughs> to a drinking bros <laughs> house party um i'd go grandma plastic on all the couches i'd go fucking put everything away dude put it in storage okay yeah. have just an empty house Reinforce it, drywall, <laughs> and I know because that look, look that's Charlie Classics area. Um, okay. The Sausage Castle is like forty five minutes away, so we're we're is gonna he, try to pull okay. some weirdo out of there to see if they'll do a show. Sure, nice. Um, you know, be a guest, but uh, God knows who who or what that is. Sure. Um, if you follow Charlie Classic online, it is you never know. No, it's one of our buddies, but uh, man, weird life he lives. Sure. Fun, super, but weird. Super nice guy. Nicest guy in the world. Yeah, which I wasn't expecting. You hung out with him in L.A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Whenever he, he comes on the show on Drinker Bros, it ends up being super fucking weird. Super weird and but, super and really gross funny. and funny. And so <laughs> it was weird to me when I met him that he was like super nice, really respectful, like just a totally, you know? Yeah. He pitched, I think it works. I he, think it works. He pitched somebody who does clown pornography. So there you go. We'll see. Um, we'll see if we can get one of those weirdos on. But all I kept thinking was, man, let's let's say you get somebody involved in clown pornography and then you have them over to someone's house. Sure. <laughs> How do you explain that to the neighbors who are going to come over of like, hey, man, so what's the show you listen to? Right. Ah, it's this thing or whatever. No big deal. And then there's a painted clown inside your house. Right. What do you? <laughs> right. Right. What do you do? And what does the then? clown look like? Don't know. Is it a girl? Yeah, yeah, it's a girl, but I, I don't In know. Full clown. Yeah. Probably painted on everything. Who knows? I, I don't know. The, I, I'm going to have to research it. Sure. Um, and we'll see, obviously. Deep, but uh, deep, deep undercover research. Yeah, that's not one of my things. I'm not. I don't like to be dressed up like a baby or. Sure clowns or furry or anything yeah. i don't i i'm also not in like outfits and all that other bullshit mm -hmm. you know i don't need uh french made french made cops cheerleaders all that stupid shit like we're past that sure i'm a fucking grown up you know yeah as far as porn's concerned i don't like that yeah you're just it just brings a fakeness to it right that i don't like right but I'm I do like, know oh, people you who bought the fucking thing and now you're pretending to. Yeah. I do know people who are into that shit where it's just totally. like, oh, man, well, if my wife wears a fucking cheerleader outfit. I'm like, oh, that's cool, man. I don't need to go into your whole shit. But uh, yeah, whatever you're Those into, are that's people fine. that like that's the kinkiest thing they do. Yeah. Do you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Whereas the real fucking freaks <laughs> don't room, need uh, don't need a costume. Yeah, you know my what roommate I'm saying? in college fucking walking down the driveway with a ski mask on. Yeah. Jesus now that's Christ. some real shit you I've know told what I that mean? story I'll give you the quick version here um college walking home from a party three in the morning two three in the morning somewhere in there um see a guy walking down my driveway in a fucking ski mask in an all black outfit I'm like what the fuck's up bro bro yeah and he's like Ross hey what's up dude friendly as shit and I was like w w what and he pulls up the thing and and uh I'm not gonna say his name he goes it's me it was my fucking roommate. And I was like, what are you doing, dude? And he's like, oh, man, you know, girlfriend's got a rape fantasy. So I'm supposed to go over between two and five in the morning. She left the sliding glass door over. I'm just going to go rape her with his mask on, you know, and uh, no by Robert. And I was like, yeah, cool, man. So, you know, I'll see you at breakfast. Uh, next time I saw him was at breakfast the next day. And I was like, how was that? And he was like, ah, it was fine. You know, right. Probably have to do it again. Um, so, yeah. None of that, like, mm. but that's next level where you're just like, Jesus sure, Christ. Sure. Because she wanted to be physically thrown against the wall on the bed, choked, all that other stuff, right? Okay. Um, cheerleading outfits and whatever. Eh. Blah. Cheerleaders mm. are boring. Blah. You know, I'm surprised you don't want to fuck like a professional foosball player or anything. <laughs> Done that. Yeah. Been there. <laughs> Been there, done that. It's, so not, gonna, as, it's not as sexy as it sounds. We're going <laughs> to talk about that. Um, we're 
we're adding shows and like ironically we've almost we've grown out of this brand new studio we're in right so we're they're putting we're moving into right. a, a bigger studio we're going to add shows right. there's a foosball table in there so before we went on air um i did not know that you dated a professional foosball player in your life by professional i mean he was in a league played do you win money two in this league to three yeah traveling played two to three times a week now listen what that means is he was an alcoholic, right? <laughs> and it's the same as it's a professional alcoholic. And you find ways, like really good ones, mm -hmm. the good alcoholics find ways to make it a thing, right? Okay. Bowling, darts, yep. crochet. Um, <laughs> yeah. Croquet. Whatever. Bocce ball. Things like this. Uh, cornhole. That's another one. Professional cornhole. Or Cornhole's in a league. on ESPN now. I know. And I'm like, what the fuck? So is darts. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> but if you play like not on ESPN, you're basically just in a dive bar. All foosball tables are in dive bars. Yeah. Um. So that was, and it was fun for a little while. And then I looked around and I was like, oh, I get it. How's, what, what are the paychecks for something like that? Can you? <laughs> it's not. You and you just win like. It's any kind of league. It's any whatever bowling league or whatever. You don't get money. I'm sure there's pots for things, but that but wasn't the prestige his main. Of it. Sure. Okay. When you walked in, oh, like what was kind of cool about it is that he was really good and everyone sort of knew him. But then again, bartenders, waitresses, like right, right, <laughs> everybody right, right. knows you at all the bars. Yeah. And you're kind of like, dang you. Come here a lot. Was that his main profession or did he no. do something else? Okay. All right. You seem not to want to talk about this. Look. That's a nice thing, a professional foosball player, James. Is it? I'm proud of you. Yeah. It was fun. That's something you can look back on and be like, yeah. Yeah, who, definitely. Who did your mom date? A professional foosball player. You know? Proud. True athlete. You know? <laughs> True athletes are all I really date. Well, look, man, the, the, the fucking video game kid won three million, so. Exactly. Who knows? But even the foosball, he couldn't really, like, totally commit to. Look, whatever. The there guy, was a your, lot. your boyfriend? Yeah. Okay. You know what I Why mean? Why couldn't like, he commit to that? Just, or actually, I'll say that. He's, that's the only thing he really did totally commit to. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And the it's rest of life ball. was uh, mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. kind of a mess. Mm -hmm, yeah. All right. Well, look, if you're passionate about something. Yes. You never work a day in your life. Um, that's what they say. <laughs> that's what they say. Yes. And if your passion is in the bars, you need to work a lot to pay for your passion. Is that <laughs> another thing that they say? They don't give you free tabs there, huh? No. No. Yeah, you seem sad about that. <laughs> no. Because I have a feeling you were picking up a lot of those tabs while he was, I was playing not, foosball. I was not. Look, it was a charmed life for a little bit. It felt like, a, like I was dating a rock star for a second. And by second, I mean one week. And then after that, <laughs> it really started. The sheen started to wear off. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I was young enough that it was like, okay, where I'm like, ah, oh, cool. I'm in a fucking dive bar like all week, every week. Yeah. Like, sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you're kind of like. Mm. Jeez, puffy, you know? Sure. Starting to really show that yeah. you're in the bar all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind of thing. Sig's inside. Oh. So, yeah. So, Sig's inside era. How, how old are you? 20s? Uh, no, not Sig's inside, but yeah. Okay. 20s, late 20s. All right. Mm hmm. It was just almost not cute. How about that? Yeah. Because I, I would have said it, early it 20s. Cusper, it was a cusper age. Where you could be like, awesome. Or you'd be like, mm, let's get our shit together. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the cusper age. Because I am, a, I am a millennial. I'm a cusper. Yeah. Plus cusper millennial. I, you mi know? I missed it by a summer, I think. But, sure. Uh, you're and there. everybody you're, knows that. Yeah, yeah, you're there. I'm right in there. You're there. Uh, do you have a crime corner today? Ooh. Yes. Do you? No, you do. I do. Oh. Crime Corner! Crime Corner! Crime Corner. Now let... 
I dropped oh, something. I thought, yeah. <laughs> I thought you were. I wasn't trying to so suck my scared. own dick. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Again, subscribe on YouTube if you want to see me try to suck my own dick. So listen, what do you, what would you do if you won three million dollars in at the lottery? Lottery three million dollars. First thing that you would do. Uh, Priority one. Retire my parents. Like the day of, like, what's one thing you should go to a shot, go to the bar, buy that shot for everyone. Like, what's the one, like an immediate thing? Uh, Cause retiring your parents would take uh, some paperwork and process and stuff like that. So it would be uh, <laughs> a party at the house. I think so it would just be like a, a party. Yep, just invite everybody over and just buy the, the dopest shit. Well, I'll tell you what this woman did. I don't think I would want to go out the first night. I would be nervous about it. Okay. You know? Okay. I want to I wanna rage with friends and enjoy that, I think. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Uh, Detective Abe Hernandez. Ooh. I like anybody with the name this. Abe. I know, right? He seems like an honest guy. He's an able yeah. as well. So this woman arrested for defecating on boss's desk after winning the lottery. Ah, now listen, that could be a thing, right? Yeah. Yep. 40 year old, 40 year, one year old woman had the winning lottery ticket for worth over $3 million on Friday night, but showed up to work on Monday to deliver one last package. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. She worked at a courier company, so the package thing works. No there. way. Oh, yes. The where manager said I knew um, where, what? Where did she win that $3 million? Ooh. Ooh, now now you're asking too many questions. Whose now computer you're computer is that, to by know. the way? The audience wants to know whose computer that is. <laughs> that's, Everybody in the video is like, producers. "Give me a computer." That's our producers. Uh, the state's not important, James. I don't want to no, put too so really much pressure isn't. on you. No, it really isn't. I mean, who cares, right? Yeah, I just I wondered. For, it, it seems like an Alabama thing, but yeah, yeah, definitely. You know. Yeah, the Valley Report, anyways. Yeah. New York. No, that's shocking. That's why I asked. That, I would not expect someone in New Sorry, York to do yeah, that. Sorry, yeah, no, me neither. No, that, now that one's At surprising. At the courier company in New York, yeah, and the manager said, I knew something was wrong because I came back from lunch and the door to my office was closed. And she, he walked in, blammo, she's on the desk, crouched down, taking a shit. So he walks in on her mid-shit? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. It was worth it, the woman said on arrest. <laughs> on Friday, when I realized I hit the lotto, I knew this would be the first thing I would do. <laughs> this woman's I actually hit up a hero. Can I we... hit up every Mexican food truck and save my dumps all weekend. Is that what I she was, said? Mm -hmm. I was shuffling around like a death row inmate, trying not to explode. Now listen. There is no way this is a real story. Is this real? <laughs> Apparently it is. Apparently, come on. Is. I'm not. Is seeing there a name? Anything. Is there a name for her? Uh, no. I, I'll I'll look this story up because you're using watching you use the computer is like. Who cares if it's real? You know, I, it's fun. Um, no, because if it is, here's why I say this: if it is, this will be the first time in Woman the history arrested. of our show. Uh huh. That I will also name Revolutionary Figure of the Week. It'll be a crime corner and Revolutionary Figure of the Week because that would be amazing. Okay. Woman, I'm just going to type in woman takes. Woman dump arrested for defecating on bosses after Lotto win. The Valley Report. Um, Snopes. That's a thing, right? Snopes, what? Snopes is a site that's a relatively. Yeah. Oh you, boy! What do we got? I don't know. I don't know if this is real, James. All right. Ah, I'm trying to find a, a reputable source on this one. Okay. I got a mugshot, but no name. Yeah, me too. In New York, see, here's the thing: if it was Florida, you could get a name because of the Sunshine Law or whatever. Uh huh. It is. Hoax alert. Alert, but that, we don't have a confirmation of that. Um, boy, man. I, I, they've got a fucking picture of her. I know. So listen, here's the thing. You may not have the, the name because uh, it's in New York and they have to keep things so like gonna, that sealed. I, I, all right. 
Here's the thing. We'll just, we'll let it go for now, and I'm sure I'll get messages about the hoax of it, right? But for now, we're going to believe that it's true because we need that today. We do need this today. (laughs) What are you, come on. Because okay, so in this article, she has a very, very serious face. Alec, maybe we can you paste this into the the show? Okay, Um, because that way, again, if you're watching the video show, Jamie, um, time code this. So put her picture. Yeah, we'll put we'll put her picture in this, and uh, uh, we'll cut this into the video so people at home can see this and then judge for themselves. Here's why I say to do this, right? And, And again, subscribe on YouTube to watch this. Ross Patterson Revolution podcast. The picture that they're showing is a serious faced mugshot sure. of a white lady mm-hmm. who looks totally fucking normal. Um, it says she's 41 years old. Uh huh. She looks like she's 41 years old. Sure. This makes sense. Sure. If you're going to write a fake article and use somebody else's head, couldn't you get sued for that? Is what I wonder, unless she works for that company and was just like, hey, this is a really funny thing. So, I'm going to read the rest of this and because you, you kept this part out. Now, listen, you know, I don't love to go into detail about poop. Yeah, but I do. Poop so I'm going to go there. It's not my thing. No, but I'm going to let the people know. But this made me feel like it might be a hoax because of this kind of detail. But go ahead. I slowly opened the door to discover the woman with her pants around her ankles hunched over my desk like a hippopotamus slash cheetah dropping a massive poo on my desk. She shot her head towards me and locked eyes. I was frozen in shock and fear. In my peripheral vision, I saw a huge mud monkey. Mm -mm. See, that kind of stuff, like I do not do that. Like that's where I shut down. I have not heard the term Mm. shit be called a mud monkey. Mm. Um, in my, peri- my peripheral vision, I saw a huge mud monkey yep. sliming out of her butt like a Play-Doh fun factory. Okay. And so then when I, I didn't read that only because <laughs> w- who has that kind of description on a fucking police report or wherever it may be. So, you know, well, I don't know. they were interviewing the boss. So the woman said it was worth it. On Friday, when I realized I'd hit the lotto, I knew yeah, this I would be the, the first thing I would do. I hit up every Mexican food truck and saved my dumps all weekend. I was shuffling around like a death row inmate trying not to explode. I've been putting up with that guy's shit for years. It's time he put up with some of mine, is what she said. So then now I go like, uh, that you don't get that kind of description on a real story. So look. Who knows? I can't find whether it is or isn't. So I'm going to pre- I'm going to go with the written word oh, in front of me. I, and and it, look, it's the woman's mugshot that sells me on this. I don't know if this is true. This is on a bunch of other sites, including eight shit. But I don't know. Look, eight shit has never done me wrong. That dude. is a reputable source. In, eight shit in the has house never. If it Jade's. was World News Daily, maybe. Right. That's been banned. You told me no. Yeah. Um, I wanted to also give some honorable mention, um, so some wait. detectives that I'm working on their cases as well. Uh, George Abbott, what up, dog? John Patton and W Polo O2. Okay, so coming soon. Go ahead. Okay, um, I- I'm going to give this woman the re- if this is true, she gets revolutionary figure of the day. If not, here's the caveat to this: if okay. not, <laughs> and she was in on this article or this hoax and decided to use her picture as this mugshot because this has been shared a million times or whatever at yeah. this point, that's pretty bold to say, Hey man, I'll be the one that you can use a photo of me without makeup. Cause this is what this is looking like a real mugshot. And then I'm fine with you using my actual face and then saying, in my peripheral vision, I saw a huge mud monkey sliming out of her butt like a Play-Doh fun factory. Because that's, that's going to turn a lot of people the wrong way. If Let's just say you knew this girl, right? And you got a hold of this article and you're like, oh, God. Right. And now you're gonna, all you can think of is that's the girl who won the lotto and took shit on someone's desk. 
So pretty awesome. But yeah. <laughs> and it feels like, here's the thing. It feels like everybody, when there's that much money involved, it feels like everybody's cool with it. Right. The yeah. cops are probably laughing. The yeah. manager is like, are you fucking kidding me? Right. So if this did really happen, I feel like this, the, the way that the article <laughs> is, is exactly how it would be. <laughs> I won $3 million. Send me to jail for pooping. I'll fucking just post bail and get the fuck Man. out and show up to court. Maybe hire a lawyer because I'm super rich now. Right. Uh, I I want it to be true so bad. Me too. Because and it's, again, it's I just really, have really to great. go. I'm going to go with it. You know? Yeah. I, I'm going to go like back in the day when we would just read articles and like believe them. And and to backtrack uh, about what I would do, obviously I wouldn't do that because we own our own company so i would be desk. shitting yeah, on my yeah, own yeah, desk yeah, 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 um that i've yeah. got to sit out sure every day and then talk to people uh -huh. so i'd probably avoid that one got you probably something else um but uh man that is gold i hope it's true we'll find out i guarantee you as soon as like the second this this episode airs the listeners will let us know i'm sure yeah and i appreciate it um, since we're at the end of the show, <clears throat> please go out and, and, uh, and get, thank you for my service. We're getting really close to the New York times, uh, bestseller list. And, uh, it would be amazing if you threw a party at Olive Garden, that would be really, really fucking funny. So, uh, do that. The only way we can do that though, is it's on the list. We, we just can't do it for another book release. Oh, for just a, yeah, normal. Nah. Yeah. We nah. can't, we won't do anything. No. No. Actually, and it will be not even a, an accomplishment in my mind. Yeah, I'll get a kebab from that. What's that Mediterranean joint, you know? Oh, Foga de Chow? No. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, we don't have that. that we don't have that. We, we don't that? have such like, a nice establishment. 13 bucks or whatever. Pino or... Oh, yeah, Peno. Yeah, we'll get a couple of kebabs Peno, for yeah. 13 and call it a day. Or we could go to Double, double Happiness. And get some Chinese food. Yeah, yeah. So we'll do that instead. There you go. Because I don't, at this point, I've written enough books that I don't, I don't deserve anything. If it's not New How York much Times happiness? Best. You have a double happiness. <laughs> it's double. <laughs> For Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I am Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution. Good night, everyone. Good night. <laughs>